extend that to several dimensional system by a, rather than each cube just being a single variable I would integrate over say if I had a three dimensional system each of these would become integral over the three cubes say from an XYZ coordinate so, so that's actually a fairly straightforward thing to do and what happens in field theory is that you don't have an action which just depends on some path you have an action which depends on a field so field's a function that depends on time and also on position in space. So it's uh, various, you probably do scalar fuel theory, so that is really just a function of time and the three uh, position coordinates, x, y, and z. And the path integral there, you don't, rather than integral over this sort of single path, q of t, you integrate over the whole field phi of x, y, z, and t. So it becomes a much more complicated thing, and... But the idea is essentially the same. You somehow sum over all possible configurations, and you have some notion that in the classical limit, what you get is the uh, path or the field, the function that satisfies the classical equations of motion, is the one that gives the major contribution because of exactly the same argument I gave. And so it's the same sort of idea there. So you'll see more examples of, of this when you do the field theory course. So if there's uh, any questions, then I'll stop here anyway. Sorry, yes. Well, first, let me just say that this is uh, incredibly clear lecture. It's probably the clearest lecture I've ever oh. oh, thank you. Thank you so much for preparing the students for my. Oh, right, okay. But if there's no question, let me ask you a question of having a long period. Right. First of all, uh, let me say this is a very nasty question about having a long period. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll not feel too bad then. <laughs> so perhaps you know the answer. Um, how do you use the path integral to do this square well of finite square well? The finite square well. Um, I know how to, we know how to do it for infinite square well. Mm -hmm. The classical path integral is the classical path integral. Right. Uh, I don't know, actually. I haven't thought about that. Uh, so, uh, There's probably something to do with the fact that the corners are too singular or something like this. Because you can certainly imagine doing it if, if uh, Gaussian approximations were as well as Gaussian smooth. Right, yes. So, so, I mean, for the infinite square well, you, you sum over your paths, you just expand as Fourier yeah, series, so and then it's... Two, you're right. right. So that's essentially the same as a harmonic oscillator, essentially, the, the idea they can do that way. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I guess, no, I don't know. So I presume this question, that, yeah, it's, it's how to find the right way to, uh, to decompose the path into some nice sum, but I, d I don't know. <laughs> okay, I've never, I've asked a lot of people this question, and I've never gotten an answer. I've never found a single person who knows the answer. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's something worth thinking about then, so <laughs> I'll maybe set that as my exercise. Two days to <laughs> solve this. <laughs>